Typeform gives you a lot of options for the kinds of data that you can get from your respondents. The last few that I want to talk about are what I'm calling the miscellaneous formats. Those are date fields, legal information, and depending on your version of Typeform, payments through Stripe. Let's begin with the date. I'll come over here and just drag in date. And in this case, I'm going to ask a quick and easy question about birthdays. And I'll just put in my text here. Like I said, I'm going to replace this little curly brackets part with an actual variable here. Great, so that'll get their name. Now, a birthday is, believe it or not, a personal piece of information. And so you might want to explain why you're collecting this. And if you don't absolutely need it, then don't collect it. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to description. And I'm going to give an explanation of why I'm asking for this. And what I'm going to put here is some text that says our hypothetical service is hypothetically restricted to members who are 13 years and older, like most social media sites. That's not the case with data lab, but you know, maybe you're doing something where that has that restriction. And again, it's because you're asking for some personal information. And if you want to have higher response rates, if you don't want people dropping out or getting angry at you, don't ask information that you don't need. Now you could theoretically ask a question that simply says, are you 13 years or older? Yes or no. Or you can do it this way. I'm trying to demonstrate the date format. So we'll do it this way. The next thing that we need to do is actually set the date format itself. Currently, it shows in the standard format used in America, which is the month, the day, and then the year separated by slashes. That works fine. But you do have some other choices. Now, I have to admit that personally, I would love it if we always did dates in the ISO 8601 format, which is year, month, day with dashes, because then it sorts properly when you're looking at it. But non computer people get thrown off by that. So I'll go back to the standard month, day, year. But I will do something a little different. Just for personal aesthetic reasons, I like to separate the dates with a dot, I think it's prettier, but you can do whatever you want. I have the option of adding an image or video, I don't think there's any need for that here. But because this question has to do with whether a person is eligible for the service, it is important to make this question required. And I'll put the asterisk after the question, you can see that right there. And now I can hit save. Next, I'm going to get a legal document in here, really, it just says the requirements for using the service like terms of service. I'll come over here and drag the legal and put it next underneath here. There we go. And you have some introductory text where you explain what it is and then the actual legal text itself. I'm going to paste in my little explanatory text that simply says, we need to take care of some essentials, please read our terms of service and indicate whether you accept them. And then by default type form puts in the answers. Yes, I accept and no, I don't accept. Now, in normal situations, in type form, if you wanted to have different things happen, depending on a person's answer, you would be using something called a logic jump. And that's a feature that's in the paid versions of type form the pro and pro plus. And so you would have to make it so that if they said, yes, they could go forward with the survey, if they said no, it would say you either accept it or we're done. Fortunately, Typeform does make an exception with legal text. And it says if people don't accept it, it won't go forward. So I'll show you actually how that works. But I need to paste in the legal text itself. And so hopefully you have some actual legal text, I'm just going to use a uh, lorem ipsum filler text for right now. And you see it's all there. And it's Latin esque. I'm going to split it up a little bit just because a giant block of text over here is overwhelming. So I'll put in some paragraphs. Okay, so let's just say that's my legal text, it would explain the terms of service, the agreement that we need to have in order to use the service. And this one needs to be required. So I'm going to put it down there as required. And I'll hit save. Now if we had a paid that is a pro or pro plus account, we would also have the option of taking payments through Stripe. 
I'm just going to drag this over here for a second. You'll get to see at least what the promo window looks like, you know, ta-da. It says you can collect payments with Stripe, and then it shows what it looks like over here. You enter your credit card number, your information, and uh, you can tell we're dealing with Europeans because they have expiry date. All right. Anyhow, I'm going to close that one. This is what we need. And so I want to demonstrate a little bit how this works. There's a couple of qualifications or interesting things to know about these really simple questions. I'll hit view my type form. And then I'll hit return so we can get started. What's my first name? My name is Bart. When were you born? Okay. The thing I want to point out here is you can put really any answer. This is actually not my birthday. But the problem is you can put impossible answers. So let me back up on year and put like, you know, the year 3976. And in earlier questions we've seen, for instance, in the email address and the web address, Typeform did at least rudimentary validation of the data and made sure that they put stuff that at least fit the right form for what you're having. Unfortunately, Typeform is not checking here for impossible dates. We can't have something about birthdays in the future. Although truthfully, it's asking a lot. That's something that we should have to set in because Typeform doesn't really know we're asking about birthdays. I might be asking what's happening 2000 years from now. So if I press OK, you see it just kind of goes ahead. I'm going to back up for a second, and at least put in a plausible value. Okay. And then here are the terms of service. We go da 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 da. -da. You read the terms of service. Now I want you to see what happens if I say I don't accept. Well, it says you must agree, and you know we can't go on. And so that's nice. This is the one time that Typeform gives you a free logic jump. It says it's going to do different things depending on the response that people give. So we'll come up here and we'll hit instead I accept. And then we go ahead and we're good to go. And so that finishes up the kinds of data that you can get about 17 different categories of things that you can drag in to ask questions about in type form. That gives you the bones of what you need in future chapters in this course, we're going to talk about how to organize them and how to design them so they're pretty how to send them out. But this is the bare bones of what we need to get started gathering data.